You're in a hotel room? Yes. <laughs> first one of the tour or? Uh... Yes, we're in Norwich. Yeah. So the first date's tonight, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And it's been, the, is it the first tour since pre-COVID? Yep. Yeah, my first tour in three years. I've done a few one-offs in the States, but no trips to Europe in three years. Yeah. Does that feel different? Is it, I mean, just the fact that you haven't been on a tour for three years, it's all not exactly new, but it's not something you've done for ages. Is it? Yeah, it does feel different. I guess I feel a little bit like a little nervous being this far from my kids because they're I've been very like close with them and we went through a divorce and just the pandemic and we were always together in our pod and I basically haven't been away from them at all in two, three years so it feels a little weird to be this far away but they'll be joining us in two weeks so it's not like I'm away for a month or something yeah. and um and my brother's with them and then my parents so it's fine it's just kind of weird to feel like if something went down I'd be so far away but I've toured away from them in the past and honestly like I kind of miss my dog I haven't had a dog before and now yeah. I'm like, oh, I miss the dog. But <laughs> other than that, it's, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it's, it feels fresh to be over here and just like seeing England from a fresh eye again. And because mm. I haven't been here in a while and I have toured here for 19 years. So it's, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's going well. And it's nice to be with my manager, Brooks, who hasn't done a lot of touring in England yet. So I see things through her eyes too, which reminds me like, this is a cool thing to do. This is special. Yeah. This isn't just like some grind you're on. So. No, good. So mixed yeah. emotions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're here now and you can't do anything about that. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, hopefully after the show tonight, it'll all feel like, uh, you know, you'll remember everything. <laughs> this is yes. how it all works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Plus, you've got the new album to, um, to play as well. And a lot of yes. people found light. Uh, and album. I mean, in a way, my my echo is kind of new too because my echo is the last album I made came out in October 2020, and yeah. I wasn't able to tour that. So yeah. in a way, I'm touring two records because the new one isn't quite out yet. It comes out on July 8th, but we have yeah. three singles out. Yeah. So I'll be playing a, two of the singles that people might know, and a couple of the other tracks. But I'll be focusing mostly on like back catalog for this tour, but. It is nice to be able to play yeah. songs from both of those albums because people haven't heard those. And, no. and, you know, I try to mix in old stuff too because people, there are certain songs I know most people yeah. will want to hear from the back catalog as well. Yeah, it all sounds really new and exciting, even though you've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it is. And it's good to see it that way and, and like keep that fresh beginner's mind and stay in the moment and give it and stay present on stage and not in my head and like all those things that I feel are important and I feel like I I've gotten better at that over the years yeah. like really engaging with the songs and in the moment of the show like and I, I have like a looping pedal for certain songs so I'll add in loops and then I can improvise within that and like improvise banter and keep it fresh for me too so I'm yeah. not just like some kind of robot on stage um obviously if if this doesn't feel appropriate tell me but but you know it seems to be fairly clear according to the press release that um is it is about largely about this this separation and and uh i guess trying to find yourself again as an artist perhaps something along those mm -hmm. lines um and obviously that you had um you got children involved and you've been together for a long time and and, and all those things so it's um it's obviously something that's you've had to deal with and you've and you've got that outlet to deal with that via song and music mm -hmm. is, is, the, is the whole album around that idea there's some mix of stuff like um one of the songs is about my feeling inspired by the people who are protesting uh, around black lives matter stuff in portland in 2020 which was yeah. really a big a big thing in the u.s and some of my close friends were involved with that. And so there's like a song that references that. There's a song that's directly to my kids, like a love song for my children about how I love them, which actually is an older song from the past. But there's like most, I would say a lot of this material is around like what happens after a divorce and like the blossoming that can occur with, while also acknowledging the, the sadness that 
comes with it. So it's kind of a mix of talking about what happened in my divorce and then also talking about what happens after and the other things that are going on in my life. Can I ask you about um, Seaside Haiku? I think that's how you say mm-hmm. it, isn't it? Yep. Uh, that's one of those one of the songs that has been released. Yeah, so I had been out on the coast. I live in Oregon, Portland, and we're an hour from the coast. And I went out there to Seaside, which is a town, a little seaside town, and um, was writing poetry on the beach, kind of like in that haiku format, which is a five syllable, seven syllable, five syllable line. It's a Japanese uh, poetry format, and. Later on, like a year later, I wrote a song based around those poems, which turned into this song, Seaside Haiku. And it's basically like about what happens. Um, It's about rediscovering myself as an individual, both as an artist and a solo person, not in a partnership. And then just in general, I believe that women are socialized to be very giving and caring more than men. And so Sometimes we end up giving too much of ourselves away, especially wives and mothers. And so it's kind of a look at that, like give yourself and share your love, but make sure it's reciprocal and you're not giving too much of yourself away. And it's a fine line and a balance, but that's kind of like what I'm digging into with that song. Yeah. Uh, see, did you say that the name of the town was actually called Seaside? Yes. Interesting. <laughs> a place called seaside on the se- on the seaside excellent yeah uh, um so I, I didn't know if it was had anything to do with brighton obviously because of brighton's on the sea and uh, mm-hmm. your label is based here in brighton as well so um yes how does how did that happen how did you hook up with them my ex-husband tucker martin had met simon raymond who runs the label who was in cocktail twins yeah. years and years and years ago i think at south by southwest and sent him an album my first sorry my second album Trouble by the Fire Simon put out and that was in 2003 and that's when I first started touring here so it's almost 20 years yeah. I had to split from them for a while when I went to None Such which is like a major label and I was with them for the world for a while but then I got back on Bella Union and also self-releasing in the states on my own label so it's been a cool partnership I really have enjoyed working with them and I like their they have like their own boutique record store in Brighton and yeah it's fun to go down there and play in Brighton it's it's a town that I really like yeah I didn't realize you'd been involved with them for such a long time since 2003 yeah. not all not consistently yeah. but uh, for a large yeah. chunk of it yeah because the album is bookended with autumn song and and winter windows mm-hmm. winter windows is another song that has, has already been released as well which is a which is a great tune actually I really love that one um thank you uh, it feels like there's a, there's a connection there, you know, autumn, win- winter, um, winter, and the fact that the album is bookended with these two songs is, it, or am I seeing too much into that? <laughs> I like it. Yeah, no, I like that you noticed that. I actually didn't notice that yet, but okay, <laughs> it is it is kind of cool how it like you could see it like going from autumn through a whole year back to winter, or you could just see it as like a seasonal, like a wintry autumn type album, yeah. but. Um, I I think that I mean that is honestly just a coincidence that those are bookending it, but it's a coincidence that those two seasons are bookending it. But it's not a coincidence that I put them in that order. I put them in that that order because the first one starts off with like a kind of bright time is passing, changing kind of feeling, like a rejuvenation of autumn and a little bit of melancholy type of feeling. Um, and then at the end, it ends with this like strong blast of energy. And I wanted to end with that song because I felt like Winter Windows was a great way to say like, I'm doing this on my own and I'm without my ex being the producer anymore and me being the producer and taking the reins of my life, my children, my career in a really active way and a kind of punk rock way. Yeah. And that's how I feel. And I wanted to end the record on that note. Yeah. I think that's really good because uh, when I when I first saw the title, um, I, I, you know, maybe this is just my problem, but I was thinking now uh, this, you know, I, I expect this is going to be quite a melancholic song and, you know, winter and all that sort of stuff. And this idea of looking out the window of winter, but actually it's a really, yeah, it's a powerful, energetic kind of tune and uh, yeah, great way to end the album. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. And um, yeah, thank you, Jeff. I hope you enjoy the tour and uh, yeah, you get to see your dog when you, when you go back and your kids and yep. everything. You'll be He'll all right. He'll be there. Speak to yep. him anytime on 24-7, whatever. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs>